This is Joseph Coco. I'm at APE 2017 on behalf of Becky Holborn's Art Process blog. If you could introduce yourself, please. Hi, I'm Nicole Adams. This okay. is my table. <laughs> All right, Nicole, and what brings you to APE this year? Well, I heard from my mom, who's my mom manager, uh, <laughs> I heard from her that it's more of like an indie artist thing and I was like oh my gosh this is a time for my characters to shine and be you know more recognized and more or just more interesting than <laughs> Batman or Superman or anything popular yeah and I mean that's the focus behind um, basically every indie show is that they, they try to downplay sort of mainstream things so that you can focus on creators who are uh, um, up and coming, basically. Yeah. So has that been your experience at the show so far? I know it's been pretty slow um, for this year. It has, is this... it has been a little bit slow, but I've seen a lot of people that have been interested in my artwork, and, you know, they give me compliments. It's always nice to get stuff like <laughs> Yeah, it's very cute. Um, so are you a, a comic artist, or you do illustration for um, characters that um, you imagine being in, in stories like comics and video games and that sort of thing? I would really like to make... Uh, like a, like a graphic novel just based on their life, not necessarily a story, because that's hard to keep up with, you know? Sure. So, like, I don't know. <laughs> just like Slice of Life? Just, yeah, Slice stories? of Life kind of stuff. Okay. Very anime. <laughs> Sure. Um, so, anime has has been an inspiration on, in your artwork. Yeah, it tends to be. Um, a lot of the hair. <laughs> yeah. The, the hair. The hair is cool. The wild colors or the wild styles. The wild both, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I watch a lot of anime. But then, like, once I like started watching it, I realized that I could make a style of my own. So yeah. then I kind of like branched off from that, and then I became my own little creative tree. <laughs> Yeah. But with beautiful blossoms and art. <laughs> um, so Becca's done a lot of shows. Most of them have been on the East Coast, though. Uh, we're actually coming out from Nashville, Tennessee. And a lot of what we found is that anime-inspired styles on the East Coast are just lumped in as anime, basically. So yeah. we've talked to a decent number of West Coast people, and they say that that's not so much the case. Um, either there's less of a stigma for anime, or people have just seen enough of it that they can see when something is just inspired by anime and isn't just someone trying yeah. to be anime. Right. Um, is that your experience, that people can look at it and they, they can tell that you might have some experience, but that you're not just some person who's completely obsessed with Japan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um... I have been compared to like drawing like it's like oh wow that's like a really anime style and I like in a, I in like, a negative I, sense you mean I or? mean I almost kind of sort of take it negative because I want it to be something original and something that yeah. people can remember well, it's, by it's your artwork it's yes, not just some not anime artwork something that's part of a genre uh, that's music a part of um just a section of anime because like I've seen like anime artists and they're good and stuff but I want to be like different I want to branch off a part of that sure I want to be unique <laughs> yeah I think everybody wants to express themselves through their artwork that's why people are creating things um so can you tell me about some of your characters um well I was excited for this part <laughs> <laughs> well I have a favorite character I have him in my sketchbook his name is Bo, and he's my absolute favorite character ever. He is right here. Okay. And that's his best friend, Miriam. And I draw him a lot. And I don't know, I just, I love everything about him. He's very funny and caring and strong. And he's just a very big, sensitive teddy bear. <laughs> sure. And he has a country accent, and he's a huge charmer, so, you know. So, He's got a lot of stuff going for him. <laughs> um, do you have the character in mind before you start drawing uh, them, or is it something like you start doodling and then the I characters create? I just start created doodling and then, the they're just, and then they're just there. Okay. I don't know. I get inspiration from a lot of stuff. Um, I get inspiration from nature, maybe like certain cartoons that I watch. If yeah. I see like a certain color that I like, I'm like, oh, I can make a character based off of that color specifically. And then there they are. They're just born on my sketchbook or on the computer. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, so speaking of which, um, you those were marker sketches? Yeah, I actually, uh, oh, I actually use a lot of Blix markers. Yeah, Blix does fantastic jobs. I, a latte. <laughs> I use a lot of Blix markers, a lot of these colors. I yeah. always keep most colors with me. <laughs>
Yeah, so Becca pencil. has quite a Copic collection, but she's supplemented, uh, since Blick came out with their marker, she supplemented a lot with uh, Blicks. And I yeah. think for the most part, she just buys Blick now, aside from refills for our existing Copics. Because yeah. it's, it's almost like, well, why would you spend the more when it's basically the same? Blick has um, dished out enough money to create something comparable right. to Copic, I like, basically. I like the Blix markers. They last like a really long time. I actually just purchased another one that I just ran out of. And I've had I've had this specific color since I like started using the markers. And that was like maybe like two years ago. So it lasts yeah. like a really long time. And it's honestly a little better than Copic, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, everyone has preferences. It's not like there's, um, you know, de facto, uh, yeah, this is the best product. Um, so you mentioned digital work as well. Um, mm -hmm. How often are you, like, when do you decide if you're going to work digitally or traditionally? Is that something you do beforehand or is it just like, well, I'm in front of a computer, so I'm going to work digitally now? It's like I'm in front of a computer. I'm very random when it comes to my art. Like, yeah, sure. um, there are certain types of artwork that I draw traditionally, and then there may be something that, like, I can't exactly do for traditional that I can do for digital. Like, maybe, like, a different type of shading, or maybe, like, mixing colors together and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I don't know how to do this, or I can't do this. So I just open up my computer and do it there. Yeah. And, like, this piece actually over here this was originally traditional right here and it's somewhere in here i thought it was <laughs> oh boy oh so you I had just it colored traditionally as well or you mean you um penciled it oh okay yeah this was actually here tr first and then i was like i want to add a galaxy behind it but i want it to be like easy to mix together so then i just do this yeah i actually do it from scratch i didn't even like scan this in or anything okay <laughs> but yeah <laughs> So just whatever uh, whatever medium helps you get to the end of your vision is, is basically what you're going to work in. Yep, I'm a huge perfectionist when it comes to art. It's a blessing and a curse because I spend like hours on a certain piece of artwork that I would think only would take a couple hours, but it ends up, you know, keeping me up until late hours. <laughs> sure. And that's with both traditional and digital, or are yeah. you focusing more? Okay, yeah. Because I know some people will nitpick, I guess would be the word, with digital because they have that ability. They, right. If, they, if something isn't perfect, they can undo it. But with traditional, once you've made a line, it's difficult to undo yeah. that line. I so. have white out, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so what, um, so you, you heard that Ape was good for independent creators, which is great. Um, are you in the uh, San Jose area? Um, I am actually in the, we actually drove an hour out here, so it's like, okay. I'm in like the Walnut Creek area. All right. It's an hour. So you're, you're local enough. Yeah, I'm, I'm local. Yeah, where it's not a huge commitment. You don't have a hotel or anything. Oh, actually, we decided to stay overnight since we're coming here tomorrow. It's okay. just easier than driving back and forth. Yeah. Why commute when you can stay in a hotel room? <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, so would you recommend uh, artists who are kind of in the area get a hotel? What's been your experience with that? I guess it depends if you're okay with like driving an hour back and forth, especially if it's for the weekend, back and forth for, um, you know, an hour. I mean, you'd be tired. So I suggest that you would stay in a hotel room because it would be better yeah. than having to drive out yeah, here. Yeah, because the show opens a little tiring. early and closes a little late. Yeah. So you yeah. might miss traffic, but at the same time, it's it's not the longest day. It's not as long as like an anime con, right, but right. it's longer than most independent comic shows. I think like Mocha Fest and SPX usually have like nine to five sort of hours. So yeah, it's just easier to stay in a hotel room. Sure. Um, and would you have any advice to other illustrators who are considering coming to Ape for the first time? Um, I think you should definitely do it. I will admit this was a little bit slow, but that's okay because I have I had the chance to like just have my characters here and it's basically the characters are here like my family and it's just really important because I care about them so much and it just makes me really happy that I can have them just like here and people can enjoy them and them. love them and just like say oh I love this character and blah 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 and everything it just makes me super happy so even though it wasn't like I don't know crunchy roll busy it was like <laughs> it was very nice to have people just come to my table and give me so many sweet compliments and it's just really nice sure speaking of crunchy roll uh, did you actually go to the convention I did and I 
thoroughly enjoyed it. It was very much. I actually cosplayed for the first time. Cool. I tried but to cosplay. You went as a, um, you didn't go as an artist. You went as a Yeah, I just, uh, went, to, attendee? I just went to go. Yeah, sure. I want to hopefully work at Crunchyroll one day because it would seem really fun. Yeah. I'm, um, I don't know how much animation they actually do aside from, uh, you know, just translating existing things, but I guess they have some of yeah. their own things, right? Yeah. There's a lot of anime there. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay, uh, and where can we find your work online? Um, you can find it a, a lot of places. <laughs> I have a Tumblr, I have a Twitter, I have a DeviantArt, and I have an Instagram. Um, everything is all the same username except for my Instagram, there's an underscore. So it's galaxymuffin16, and for Instagram it's galaxy underscore muffin16. Okay. That's and the galaxy could... shirt. <laughs> Um, we could, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense with yes. the backgrounds. Uh, we could buy your prints and those sort of things there, or that's um, just I'm where we can... I'm hoping actually to soon make a Redbubble or perhaps just a website just where I can sell my prints and everything. Okay. So that will hopefully come soon. I yeah, will put that and, on my card. <laughs> yeah, that'll be linked on your on your social media when that comes Yes, right. hopefully. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, Nicole, and it's yes, uh, been great talking to you. I hope you have a great eight. Thank you.